Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. Today I'm going to do a plot tour to show you um, what is still growing and uh, hopefully we'll have a, um, a harvest at the end or maybe a harvest in the next video depending on how long this video is. And um, I'm going to stop waffling and let's go and see what's occurring around the plot. I still have a fair few pots of potatoes to reveal. Um, I suppose I've probably been putting it off because they haven't been very good so far and I just don't think they are going to be very good either. So I've just been putting off the disappointment. Uh, these ones here, there's still one in this pot, but these ones are empty. And these, this one and the one next to it, I've um, planted up with carrots eskimo i think they are eskimo carrots so these will then go into the greenhouse to grow on through the winter i have nothing in this area here i did hope i was hoping to maybe put some peas in but i'm not sure if i'll just leave that for a bit i still haven't got my overwintering brassica cage to put my pak choy and um Chinese kale in. I haven't done that yet, but the, the cabbages that I planted are um, are hearting up. You can see though where uh, um, the leaves have just been decimated by caterpillars. My spinach is going strong. I need to do another harvest and probably I'll give a lot to the chickens because they seem to really like it. My squashes, these are um, these are looking quite good. This variety is Uchiki Kuri. So I've got, by the look of it, three Uchiki Kuri squashes, which I'm very happy about. Then, for some reason, this one here, this, this plant here, seems to be a hundred weight. Or if it's not a hundred weight variety, I don't know what on earth it is because I, that's not what I planted. I did not plant that that kind of squash, and I've ended up with two squash plants like that because there's one down here. And this one was this plant was meant to be Uchiki Kuri. I I am absolutely sure that I planted two Uchiki Kuri plants here, possibly an extra hundred weight that I had left over there. And then on the other side, just come round, I planted originally three butternut squash plants along here. Then the one in the middle rotted off and this one this side rotted off. So I replaced it with this New England sweet pie or some, something like that is called uh, which which has grown fine and then we have two butternut squashes here which is great and then we have this interloper here which has done the best out of all of them and I don't even know what the blinking thing is so um yes that's um well that's just typical isn't it uh, here I've got just a load of nasturtiums, which is a bit of a mess. Over there I've got my potatoes from Erica's Challenge still going and the Desiree that um, I, uh, I planted as well. And then growing along the fence there are some Turks Turban. They are probably ready for harvesting. And then my poor old runner bean plants have been blown over. So when I put the washing on the line the other day, I looked over here and I was like, oh, that looks all different. I can't normally see the artichokes. Well, no, that's because my runner beans are all on the floor. So I was hoping to save all of these uh, for drying through the winter but I don't think they're going to dry very well on the floor. So I think my best method of attack is to strip them off, cook them up and freeze them. So I believe that's called demi uh, but I'm not sure. And if I come 
to the Kales. They are doing really well now. They have made a good recovery after being decimated by the cabbage whites. This cage I've put up is really doing the job because the cabbages are also doing really well. I um, I'll come around to the other side to show you because I think I might get a better view of the cabbages from the other side. And my celeriac. <laughs> That's doing really well too. It does tend to bulb up between September and November. It seems to do quite a lot growing between those two months. So um, I'm really, really pleased with the size of these bulbs actually. At least something has gone right this year. And then, um, yeah, back to my cabbages. I think this is a better view through the netting anyway. I don't want to take the netting off. You know what netting is like. It never goes back the way it uh, it should. My red cabbages look like they are doing well. I've got a cabbage hearting up down here and one hearting up down here. They're all different varieties that I bought for a pound from the garden centre. So actually they've they've done well considering you know they were reduced because they were old seedlings and then if i come around to my courgettes they are still producing i only took a harvest off here on uh monday and those two have grown in that time so we are doing well for courgettes and the pumpkins here I think these are ready for harvesting too. I um, I think I'm going to probably take out a lot of my squashes very soon because in the past I have left them too long and what happens is the stalk begins to get a bit, um, not rotten, but it doesn't protect it for as long as it could. So I reckon these are ready for harvesting. And my sweet corn, we're still having some sweet corn from here. Uh, but I think this sweet corn has gone over a bit now. The kernels inside are not looking as desirable as I want them to. Um, and I just take them of an evening when we want sweet corn. So I just pop out when 10 minutes before I cook it, I, I pick it and um, eat it, which is why some of it has gone over now. I should have harvested it and... Um, I'd froze it but um, never mind it's still got the sweet corn in over there in that bed over there so we'll go and have a look at that now and that sweet corn I just showed you I'll um, I'll give to the chickens and they'll really enjoy that I still got some leeks in here to come out and some carrots to come out my parsnips I haven't picked any parsnips yet because uh, I'm waiting for the frost to come to sweeten them. And then I still got the carrots down this end as well. So, but they are gonna come out soon and I think I'll probably cook them and freeze them because I just think they're ready for picking. I've got more carrots in tubs over here. These are, again, Eskimo. Um, not really seeing much but they haven't long gone in so for the top growth that's quite impressive but there's not an awful lot going on underneath at the moment and then this is the sweet corn that i have left to harvest for us as and when we need it but i think i'm going to take it all out now and just eat it through this week coming round to the front garden now the lemongrass is doing really well there and the lemon balm has been really good as well. I need to harvest that and make syrup and other things out of it. And then I've got a nice little messy area. Well, one of several messy areas. But I put these ones, these tubs, these were in my greenhouse. Um, and I just shifted them from the greenhouse because I felt like the other pots in there would benefit from these not cluttering them and since I've moved them they have actually started to ripen outside so maybe I should have just put them outside all along <laughs> but um, I've got a nice collection of chilies there and then 
if I come around to the tomatoes, there are still some growing, not too much sign of, of blight. I think these can still limp along for a little bit more. I will harvest these and make a sauce out of them. So they look about ready. And uh, I, I'm a bit all over the place today, aren't I? My strawberries, they all went sort of really um, brown. I cut off all the brown and now they're growing back for some reason. I think it's where we've had a um, quite a warm September. I think they've got confused, as I think has the asparagus, because there is still some asparagus growing behind there as well, like new spears coming out of the ground. So, uh, yes, not sure how that's going to turn out. Still some more tomatoes on the go here. Um, lots of flowers on this tumbling tom, but I think maybe that's had its day, really. Again, there's a bit of potential on these um, pot amateur bush variety um, tomato plants but they've not been great they've not done very well for me those ones uh, so I think maybe cordon growing is probably better for me again similarly these are doing really well I'll harvest them and probably make some sauce from them as well and then these yellow ones these are really good but I'll have to harvest these today because they started to split because we just had torrential rain last night. And if I come over to this bed here, got some radish growing here, some spring onions there, carrots there, some spring onions in the middle which are probably really sheltered and um, more carrots here, mooly radish here and then Swiss chard here. And there's my Welsh onions there. They are doing really well. I shall uh, take a few from there as well. Still got a few beetroot in this um, container here. Although I do want to harvest all that and plant that up with something. And then this one gherkin plant is going really strong now. It's got a fair few gherkins on it and just having a look for any yeah there we are see they are ready for harvesting too and then this tomato plant has self-seeded itself so i'm gonna wait and see how that does actually because this started to grow about July time so I want to see whether we get any harvest from it I know an idea what variety it is because it's just self-seeded itself but um, I'll be interested to see how that does and then um, if I come over to the the long bed here this was the asparagus I was talking about which has started to grow again um, We've had a disaster here. My mazuna has all been eaten. You can just see some twigs there. But the chicory is doing well here. The lamb's lettuce is doing well here. The... I can't think what variety that is now. But I'm growing it for a cut and come again. So that's ready for a harvest. And um, I'll try and put the variety on the screen if I remember and this is a like little gem that grow through the winter they are beginning to hearten up too and then got spinach in here which has only just gone in and Pirelia there and now we're back to the tomatoes so there's still loads to do and there's still a fair bit to be harvested. I really need to um, think about what to sow for over winter, how many beds I'm going to keep going for over winter and all of that malarkey. But I'll do that in the next vlog. So all I can say about how everything is growing around the garden is lovely job.